Research tells us that most serial killers are males who begin their murderous activities in their 20s or 30s. This is probably why, when people around Tamara Samsonova started to go missing under mysterious circumstances, nobody suspected her. After all, she was a senior citizen with a kind smile, or at least people thought. Welcome or welcome back to Twisted Minds. My name is James, and today we'll dive into the story of the septuagenarian serial killer, Tamara Samsonova, who has been dubbed the Granny Ripper by the press. Samsonova is said to have murdered at least 11 people, and some sources even claim that she went as far as eating some of her victims. Let's find out more about this senior citizen's fascinating motives for this string of murders. Tamara Samsonova was born on the 5th of February, 1947, in the city of Ushur in Russia. Not much is known about her family and childhood. After graduating high school, Tamara moved to Moscow, where she studied at the Moscow State Linguistic University. When she graduated from university, Tamara relocated to St. Petersburg. It was there that she met and married her husband, Alexei Samsonova. In 1971, when she was 24 years old, Tamara and her husband, Alexei, moved into their newly built panel house, identified as house number four on Dmitrov Street. To make ends meet, Tamara found work in the travel industry, at first as a travel agent and then at the Grand Hotel Europe, while Alexei worked in a car repair plant. Tamara was in active work for a total of 16 years. For many years, all seemed to be well. However, trouble struck the Samsonova lovebirds when, in 2000, Tamara filed a missing person report with the police after her husband had suddenly disappeared. In her distress, Tamara told neighbors that Alexei must have run off with another woman. But she only told the police that she was worried that he had suddenly disappeared. Investigations and efforts were made to locate or rescue Alexei, but to no avail. This must have been very challenging for Tamara, as the two had been married for nearly 30 years. Of course, after learning about her crimes and brutal nature, many have concluded that Tamara killed her husband. But at the time, no one suspected a thing. After Lexi disappeared, Tamara, who was 53 years old then, had to consider the prospect of spending her retirement days alone in the house, where she had only ever lived with her husband. After her husband disappeared, Tamara decided to rent out one of the rooms in her apartment to raise money and keep herself company. In the summer of 2001, a man named Vladimir occupied this space, and the two established a good relationship. However, as with all relationships, there are bound to be disagreements. So, after the two had a falling out, sometime toward the end of the year, Vladimir left the apartment. In 2003, Tamara was able to find someone who stuck around for much longer. A 44-year-old from Norilska named Sergi Potanin was the one who moved in the room shortly around this time. Sadly, once again, Tamara had numerous falling outs with this tenant, who eventually got sick of her constant troubles and took off. Or so people thought. When interviewed, Tamara's neighbors mentioned that the elderly lady would often swear at her tenants in the hallways and bang on the radiators. So when Sergi was suddenly nowhere to be seen, the neighbors reasonably assumed that he had grown weary of Samsonova and moved back to his home in Norilska. However, future investigations by the authorities suggest otherwise. According to investigators, on the 6th of September 2003, during one of their quarrels, the then 56-year-old Tamara killed Sergi. She then went on to dismember his corpse before discarding it on the streets of St. Decius Way. After Sergi's departure, Tamara continued taking in tenants, on and off, usually men who were a few years younger than her. The money she made from this allowed her to enjoy a reasonably comfortable retirement. This routine continued for over a decade until the pensioner found herself alone again in March of 2015, when her apartment needed to undergo some renovations. Luckily, one of her friends introduced her to 79-year-old Valentina Nikolaevna Ulanova just in time. As Ulanova also lived on Dimitrov Street, the mutual friend convinced her to let Tamara stay with her for some time while Tamara's house was undergoing renovations. According to the agreement, Tamara was to stay at Ulanova's in exchange for helping with the chores, as Ulanova was ailing and was also older than Tamara. 
Ulanova agreed and Tamara began living in her house. Over time, Tamara enjoyed living in Ulanova's house and had no intentions of leaving. This development might have been welcomed by the 79-year-old if things were going smoothly, but sadly they were not. As was common between her and her own tenants in the past, Tamara had constant arguments with Ulanova throughout her stay at the older pensioners. Their relationship turned sour and Ulanova eventually asked Tamara to leave, but she was not having any of it and still found ways to stick around. The determined house guest managed to prolong her stay by helping with the chores, which Ulanova could not easily do herself, and by flat out ignoring the quit notice that had been issued to her. After another quarrel over washing the dishes, which was the last straw, Samsonova decided to settle the matter once and for all. On the 24th of July that year, Samsonova traveled all the way to Pushkin and decided to visit a pharmacy. There, she convinced the pharmacist to sell her quite a large dose of phenazepam, a Russian-made schizophrenia pill. She was able to get away with this suspicious purchase by drawing on the fact that she had previously been hospitalized on three occasions in psychiatric homes. To put things in perspective, phenazepam is a benzodiazepine drug that was developed in the Soviet Union in 1975. It has sedative effects and is known for making the user feel calm and relaxed, as well as relieving physical tension. However, some inexperienced chefs abused the pill's chemical effects on people and included it in their dishes as muscle relaxants, as well as other devious reasons. On her way home, Samsonova bought some Olivier salad, along with some other household goods and groceries. Now, it so happened that Olivier salad was her host's favorite dish. Tamara crushed up about 50 phenazepam pills into the salad and offered it to an unsuspecting Ulanova, probably as a peace offering after their earlier argument. As it was already about 7 p.m., which was way past her usual bedtime, Samsonova retired to bed almost immediately after dinner. When she woke up at 2 a.m., she found Ulanova lying effectively unconscious on the kitchen floor. Upon discovering this, Samsonova grabbed her tools, two knives and a hacksaw and began dismembering the older pensioner's body. First, she sawed off Ulanova's head and then removed her limbs. Then, she cut her torso in two and used the kitchen knives to cut it all up into tiny pieces. To dispose of the pieces, she had to leave the house and return several times, carrying plastic bags. Although, retrieved CCTV footage did not show where she took the bags. Authorities later learned that she had been making trips to a nearby pond. Despite her attempts to be thorough, Samsonova left some pieces of Ulanova's body scattered around the apartment. CCTV footage showed her carrying a large saucepan, which has fuel and supported speculations that she cooked and ate the bodies of her victims, or at least parts of them. After the crime was committed, three days went by until the 26th of July, 2015, when a couple went on a walk with their dog. The dog began acting strangely when the three walked by a pond, so much so that they eventually went back. After they got close enough to the pond, the couple and their pet spotted shower curtains wrapped around something that caught the dog's interest. Curious, they decided to take a closer look, and upon inspection, the couple found out that the package contained cut up pieces of a human body. The authorities were immediately informed and the investigation began. It was not until the next day that it was established that the remains belonged to Valentina Ulanova. This was determined after a door-to-door -door survey of residents in the area, asking each one if they had noticed any suspicious or unusual activities recently. In response to the inquiry, residents had mentioned that they had not seen their neighbor, Ulanova, for some time. When the authorities arrived at Ulanova's apartment, Samsonova was the one who answered the door. Upon searching the apartment, traces of blood and fastenings from the shower curtain were found. When asked why the apartment was in such a state, Tamara stated that Ulanova had insulted her. So, she had no choice but to end her life as she was scared to return to her own house. With this confession, the authorities immediately arrested the 68-year-old. Further investigations revealed that Samsonova kept a diary with entries in Russian, German, and English. Investigators reported that she recorded even the littlest details of her daily life in this diary, as she did not want to miss a thing. As expected, 
a proper inspection of the diary provided more proof for the police's investigation. In one of her entries, Samsonova confessed to killing her former tenant, Sergi. She wrote, I killed my tenant, Volodya. I cut him to pieces in the bathroom with a knife and put the pieces of his body in a plastic bag and threw them away in different parts of the Franzinski district. She also records growing fond of living with Ulanova. As she writes in another entry, I love Valia, as she called her housemate. In a jarring turn of events, Tamara offered to take investigators back to the apartment and demonstrate how she dismembered Ulanova's body using a dummy. She showed them how she cut off parts of the body, starting with her head, and wrapped them in the shower curtain. As Ulanova was too heavy, she was forced to dispose of her legs and hips in the backyard instead of taking them to a farther location. Then, in an attempt to conceal her victim's identity, she boiled her head and hands in the saucepan she had been seen carrying. She threw these into the garbage skip, which was taken away every Saturday. More investigations are still being carried out in this case, particularly respect to the disturbing contents of her diary. But investigators have chosen not to reveal details until they're satisfied with their findings. While we already have a few answers, one cannot help but wonder just how, and more importantly, why an average woman from St. Petersburg would take an interest in killing people and meticulously disposing of their bodies in the way that Samsonova did. As it turns out, these questions were answered by Samsonova herself and a few people who knew her. Tamara told reporters herself that she was troubled by a maniac upstairs who pushed her to murder people. According to her, living with Ulanova quieted this maniac, which was why she was defiant when asked to leave. This intertwines with the result of her psychiatric evaluation, suggesting schizophrenia as the basis for most of her gory deeds. Marina Krivenko, who lived next door to Sansonova and would sometimes visit her, revealed to the authorities that the killer was a huge fan of Andre Chikadillo's story, a horrific case we have explored on Twisted Minds before in a 45-minute special. Andre dubbed the Butcher of Rostov, was a serial killer who had ravaged the Soviet Union a few decades before Samsonova. Andre was a wartime survivor who went on to spread the evil he had experienced during the war to the world around him in a number of unspeakable ways, starting with sexual crimes and working his way up to murder when his sexual desires were not met. Samsonova's admiration for him can easily be spotted as she chopped up her victims' bodies in a similar fashion to his. In addition to her mental illness and admiration for the historical serial killer, Samsonova dabbled in the dark arts. Investigations revealed that the old woman owned a stack of texts on astrology and magic, and one of her neighbors told the authorities that she was keen on these topics. While her interest in these is not a valid indication of a murderous nature, it is suspected that some of her killings were performed as part of some occult ritual, which would be concerning if that is the case. During her first hearing on the 29th of July, 2015, Samsonova admitted to committing the crime without any hassle. This must have shocked the small crowd as the elderly lady looked so well put together and fragile, even during the trial. Shockingly, Tamar herself seemed pretty relieved that she had been caught. When reporters approached her, she seemed more concerned about her neighbors and the whole country knowing about her crime than the actual punishment she was about to get for the crime. She even blew a kiss to reporters and other observers. During the hearing, Tamara was asked to address the court and she explicitly stated that she had planned all the murders up until one so that she might be found out and arrested. According to her, there was no other way to live and it would be better to spend the rest of her days in prison. At the end of the trial, the judge said to her, I have been asked to arrest you. What do you think? She responded, you decide. I'm obviously guilty and deserve a punishment. When the judge announced that she would be kept in custody for the duration of the investigation, Samsonova clapped gleefully. On the 26th of November, 2015, the results of a forensic psychiatric examination Samsonova had undergone revealed that she was a danger to society and herself. She is thought to be dealing with schizophrenia, having been admitted to a psychiatric hospital in the past. Because of this, the senior citizen was placed in a specialized institution, the Kazan Clinic until investigations were over. 
possibly during her sentence. In December of 2015, Tamara was finally sentenced to life imprisonment. And according to the court's judgment, she was to serve her sentence in a mental facility. Right now, Tamara is 75 years old and is expected to be spending her final days in the Kazan Clinic. Thanks for tuning in to Twisted Minds. That was the case of Tamara Samsonova. And why don't you go ahead and click on one of the two videos on your screen for another one of our videos. 